Hello everybody, I am Syed on Mass Online. Today's topic is derivation of one dimensional wave equation. Now to solve the derivation of one dimensional wave equation, we will try to consider uh, a flexible string, maybe a string of this uh, form, right, in such a way that you will be able to form the waves. So you can see that you are taking a string in such a way that you are able to form the waves in this form. So what you are doing is you are taking this string and uh, you are just trying to uh, tie the string at one end of the wall. The other end of the string is tied to the other end of the wall. So if this is fixed at one end, what you are uh, doing is from the other end you are just giving a jerk. If the jerk, jerk is given to this string, what happens is the waves will be created. So waves of this form will be created. You can see that the waves of this form will be created. So for that what type of string that we are taking? We are taking a string, this string whose tension is uniform throughout. So you are taking the tension, say tension T is uniform throughout. This is what we are taking. The tension T is uniform throughout. And the second thing that we are doing over here is the effect of gravity because as you, if the string is hanging so gravity will be acting on the uh, string because the tension of the string is too large therefore we'll try to ignore the effect of gravity and uh, while you're giving a jerk to the uh, uh, string uh, the string will move in such a way that the small uh, transverse vibrations are obtained so you have to give a jerk in such a way that the uh, the waves that are formed should be small in nature of this type right so this type of waves have to be created when you give a jerk so at one end of the string is fixed from the other end from here you are just giving a jerk you are just shaking it from here so these waves are being created all right so i have just written this in the form of a statement if you try to see here so we are considering a flexible string tightly stretched between two fixed points at a distance of l apart so the distance that we are uh, taking so if it is fixed from this end here so the total distance between uh, this is l so that is what we are taking the distance from one end to the other end of the string is l so we are taking a, a string tightly stretched between two fixed point at distance l apart and then we are taking mass per unit length of the string to be rho which represents the density and what are the assumptions that uh, we are taking over here the first assumption is that the tension of the tension t of the string is same throughout as i just shown you the tension is taken the same throughout that's the first assumption that we are making coming to the second assumption as i told you the effect of gravity is ignored due to the large tension of the string then the third assumption that we are uh, doing just now i have shown you the motion of the string is in such a way that small transverse vibrations are taken place so let me take along the coordinate axis this is x and this is the coordinate axis that we have and we are considering the wave so only one part of the wave so this is your wave over here and I am taking two uh, points say point A and this point A on the string is at a distance of x from the origin all right let me take another point be very close to A all right now this point B is at a distance this distance is already x and this distance which is there is delta x small distance so the total distance from the origin to the point uh, b will be how much x plus delta x that's the distance we have it is x plus delta x now because this is a string over here the tension will be acting so suppose if i am taking the tension as t1 in this direction t1 is the tension and here if i draw a tangent this is another the tension at the point B if I take the tension to be equals to T2 and suppose if I just drop a perpendicular to the y-axis over here then the angle that is, is making over here 
this angle will be alpha right so the horizontal component angle is alpha similarly if I just try to draw a perpendicular from here so this angle will be nothing but beta that is the angle beta that I am taking so now and this is the uh, wave that we are ha having uh, along the x and y direction we are considering so we are just taking a small element AB and we are trying to uh, study uh, the characteristic of this string in the small length AB so what I am taking over here is I am taking T1 be the tension of the string be the tension of the string T1 be the tension of the string at the point A and T2 the same thing is right T2 be the tension of the string T2 be the tension of the string at the point B I'm just writing this statement so that you can just make no uh, notes of this now as the uh, so this motion is along the vertical direction there is no motion along the horizontal direction therefore the horizontal component will be so if you write down the horizontal component the horizontal components this T1 and T2 because there is no motion along the horizontal uh, direction this T1 and T2 the horizontal component uh, must cancel each other they will cancel each other so which means that you have the horizontal component along this uh, T1 so along T1 the horizontal component will be T1 cos of what is the angle at T1 the angle is alpha so it is T1 cos of alpha that will be equals to at the point T2 uh, the tension T2 you can see at the point B uh, the angle is beta so it is T2 cos of beta because it cancels out we can take the tension to be equals to say T where this alpha and beta that I have taken where this alpha and beta are the angles made by are the angles made by T1 and T2 with the horizontal with the horizontal this represents your horizontal component now coming to the vertical component so the vertical component once again at the point A and B so let us write down the vertical component vertical component of tensions R suppose you take uh, at the point A vertical component will be T1 sine of alpha and at the point uh, B it will be T2 sine of beta so it will be T1 sine of alpha and it will be T2 sine of beta but the question is whether both the components are positive or they are negative you try to observe this T1 which is in the downward direction because it is in the downward direction you can write down this vertical component to be negative so it is minus T1 sine of alpha and T2 sine of beta if that is the uh, uh, case then what will be the resultant force the resultant force acting vertically upwards so what will be the resultant force which is acting vertically in the upward direction it will just be the sum of these two values it is uh, minus t1 sin alpha plus t2 sin of beta 
that will be the sum or I can just write down first the positive value which is t2 sine of beta then the negative value minus t1 sine of alpha so that will be your uh, vertical component now uh, using the Newton's uh, second law let us apply the Newton's second law the Newton's second law of motion because we are considering the motion of the uh, string therefore we are using the Newton's second law of motion so Newton's second law of motion we know it is force F is equals to it is mass into acceleration mass is M into the acceleration is A so what is the force the resultant force we have taken it as it is T2 sine of beta minus t1 sine of alpha so this is your resultant force that is equals to mass mass is uh, the formula that you have for uh, mass is uh, nothing but it is density into volume that is what we have so we know it is density into uh, what is the we are considering we are studying only between the point A and B between the point A and B what is the distance that you are having delta X so therefore it is rho into delta X so we will be getting the mass to be equals to rho into delta X or rho delta X and the acceleration the acceleration can be written as dou square u by dou t square that will be the acceleration if that is the uh, case we can uh, just try to simplify this one so to simplify let us try to divide the entire equation by t suppose if I divide this by t so in that case I'll be getting t2 by t into sine of beta minus t1 by t into sine of alpha that will be equals to rho by t delta x into dou square u by dou t square so just dividing throughout by t we have got this expression now if you try to bring about the relationship we have got this relation here this t1 cos of alpha is equals to t2 cos of beta is equals to t so from here I need to get this uh, value that means t2 by t and t1 by t so let us try to take the first uh, equation that we have over here it is t1 cos of alpha will be equals to what will be equals to t so you want t1 by t over here so I'll take this t on this side it becomes t1 as it is cross multiply divided by t is equals this cos of alpha you can take on the other side becomes 1 by cos of alpha so you can write here t1 by t to be equals to how much cos of alpha just taking this first relation t1 cos of alpha is equals to t you have one more result t2 cos of beta so let us take that value also so t2 cos of beta its value is equals to t alright so this will be equals to again t2 cross multiply t on the other side is t2 by t so t2 by t will be equals to cross multiply this cos of beta on the other side 1 by cos of beta now if you try to plug in these two values back over here t2 by t you have got t2 by 2 t to be equals to 1 by cos of beta so it is 1 by cos of beta into sine of beta minus t1 by t is 1 by cos of alpha so it is 1 by cos of alpha into sine of alpha is equals to this value as it is rho by t into delta x dou square u by dou t square now this is nothing but sine by cos so sine by cos will be tan so tan of beta minus this is also sine by cos will be tan so tan of alpha that is equals to it is rho by t into delta x into dou square u by dou t square so this tan represents your slope alright so this tan of alpha and tan of beta represents the slope represents the slope so the tan of beta tan of beta represents slope at what point beta is over here 
so beta is at the point B the angle made is beta so this point B is at what distance x plus delta x and at the point A it represents the angle alpha so at what distance at the distance x so now if I write down this tan of alpha value tan alpha because it is slope slope is always represented in the form of so do u by do x and it is at what distance alpha is at a distance of x then you have tan of beta so tan of beta again that can be represented as do u by do x and angle beta is made at a distance of x plus delta x now these two values you can substitute back over here in this particular equation so if you want you can take this as say equation number one so your equation number one implies tan beta you can substitute do u by do x at the point x plus delta x minus tan alpha is do u by do x at the point x is equals to it is rho by t into delta x it is do square u by do t square suppose if i take this delta x on the other side you can rewrite this as do u by do x x plus delta x minus do u by do x at x whole divided by delta x that is nothing but this is rho divided by t as it is delta x is already taken on the other side you are left out with do square u by do t square now suppose if I apply the limit delta x tends to 0 so you will be getting so as delta x tends to 0 so limit as delta x tends to 0 you have do u by do x at x plus delta x minus do u by do x at x whole divided by delta x will be equals to right here you don't have delta x value so you can just write it as rho by t into do square u by do t square now this expression that you have this represents uh, the basic uh, differentiation uh, uh, formula so this represents your do by because do x is there do by do x of what is this value you are having here do u by do x so do u by do x so it becomes do u by do x so this is the basic differentiation formula so do by do x of do u by do x you got is equals to here you have rho by t into do square u by do t square this do by do x of do u by do x is nothing but do square u by do x square is equals to it is rho by t times of do square u by do t square now suppose if we cross multiply this t and rho on the other side becomes t comes in the numerator divided by rho into this is do square u by do x square is equals to you will be left out with do square u by do t square suppose if I replace this value of t by rho right by say c square so we will be getting c square do square u by do x square will be equals to do square u by do t square so where I have taken the value of t by rho which is a constant to be equals to c square or if I try to rewrite this one it becomes do square u by do t square is equals to this one c square into do square u by do x square so this equation represents your one dimensional wave equation or you can even write down this in the form because u is being differentiated with respect to t partially twice so you can write this as u t t is equals to c square times of since u is being differentiated with respect to x twice so you can write it as u x x so this represents your one dimensional wave equation is one dimensional wave equation that proves the result thank you